Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Balrampur Chini Mills Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Carl Kola from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Kola. Uh, thank you, Janice. Uh, good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Balrampur Chini Mills Q3 and 9M FY22 results conference call. Uh, today we have with us Mr. Vivek Saraugi, Managing Director of Balrampur Chini Mills, and Mr. Pramod Patwari, Chief Financial Officer of the company. Uh, we would now like to begin the call uh, with brief opening remarks from the management following which we will have the forum open for a discussion. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation, uh, which was shared with you all earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Saraugi to make his opening remarks. Uh, over to you, Vivek. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Balrampur's December quarter results earning call. I trust all of you and your families are keeping safe and in good health. I will initiate the call with an update on the current developments on the sugar sector, followed by our company's key highlights for the period under review. As per latest estimates from Islam, India's sugar production estimate has been revised to 31.5 million for 21-20, against the earlier forecast of 30.5 million. This estimate is after diversion of 3.4 million tons of production towards ethanol. UP is estimated to produce 10.2 million this season against 11.1 million last season due to lower cane yields and lower recoveries along with higher diversion for ethanol. UP is expected to divert 1.3 million for sugar towards ethanol as compared to 0.7 diverted last year. On the other hand, Maharashtra, uh, production estimate for Maharashtra is expected to be higher at 11.7 million on account of increased area, better yields, and better recoveries. Sugar mills in Maharashtra are expected to divert 1.1 million ton for production of ethanol as compared to 0.7 million ton. Sugar production in Karnataka is expected to be higher at 4.8 million ton against 4.5 million tons last year. On the export front, contracts for about 4.5 million tons have already been entered into, and therefore India should be able to comfortably achieve its target of 6 million tons of export. Therefore, with an opening stock of 8.2 as on million as on 1st October 21, domestic consumption of around 27 million, export of 6 million, and estimated uh, production of 31.5 million, the net depletion to inventory would be 1.5 million, therefore making it 6.7 million. This would be the second lowest stock we are carrying around in uh, carrying at the end of the year in the last decade. Hence, demand supply situation remains fairly balanced, and we should continue to see the effect of that in form of former realizations as the season progresses, as the year progresses. Coming to the ethanol segment, the government continues to keenly drive ethanol procurement to increase that blending. Country had achieved the record pan-India blending of 8.4%. Further, government, government is committed to achieving a blend of 10% in the current season. Following the revised target of achieving 20% in 2025 instead of 2030, government is working on a policy to mandate flex fuel engines. Towards this, goal of 20% budget is also proposed to levy an additional duty of 2 per, rupees per liter on an unblended fuel. Our understanding is that if 9% blending is not done, then this 2 rupees additional excise will be attracted. So that is, uh, the unblended fuel means below 9%. We welcome this move as it reaffirms the government's push for blended fuel which will help India reduce its fuel import bill by increasing farmer income and tackle environmental concerns. Also, in the latest tender, 
the government has given some incentives in for manufacturers in supplying in deficit areas like Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, from Jammu Kashmir, etc. So all in all, it's showing the government's deep resolve in achieving the target of blending as we proceed. Moving towards the company's performance, BCML recorded an encouraging performance for the quarter on account of healthy performance on both sugar and distillery divisions. Sugar segment achieved a healthy performance into former realization. Distillery business had a strong top line and operational performance attributing to, attributable to going volumes and improved realization. I'm pleased to uh, share that we have successfully expanded our distillery at Bulleria by 40 KLPD. Expanding our over, uh, overall capacity from 520 to 560 KL. So Bulleria has gone from 160 to 200. Further more by November 22, we are on track to commission another 490 KL of uh, distillation, which will take our capacity to 1050. This is basically at two destinations, Balrampur and 330 at Bajapur and 160 at Balrampur. So that is the breakup of the 490, which is to be commissioned in November. This will enable us to produce 35 crore liters of ethanol, including two crores of ENA, which means 33 and two, right? So our capacity will be 35, two will be devoted towards ENA, 33 towards open market. Following the expansion, the performance of the uh, distillery segment will be further, following the expansion, the performance of the distillery segment will get strengthened and will be a key driver of growth for us. To conclude, I'd like to point out that Balrampur has been del delivering strong profitability, even in surplus years, on the back of various structural changes in this industry. So the demand supply situation, uh, so as the demand supply situation sustainably normalizes into various sectors, including that. So basically, we are playing our integrated model to ensure that in all times, our company delivers and enhances value. I'm pleased to share that the Board of Directors has declared an interim dividend of rupees 2.5 per share, aggregating to a payout of 51 crores. I'd now like to hand over the floor to Pramod. Pramod. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. As you know, a detailed presentation has already been uploaded on the stock exchange as well as the company's website, wherein all financial performance, including quantitative data, have been given. So for the benefit of having a larger proportion of time at our disposal for Q&A session, we can straight away go ahead with Q&A session. However, at the cost of reputation, we would like to say that our performance should always be seen on an annual basis. And in addition to that, our installed capacity of alcohol at all point of time will include around two to two and a half crores liter of DNA production, which will hardly yield any profit. Thus, profitability of ethanol division should always be worked out on the basis of net of DNA capacity, that is around 33 crores liter from FY24 onwards. I would now request the moderator to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is assembled. The first question is from the line of Pratik Tholia from Systematic Shares. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, firstly, at the outset, I would like to compliment you and your entire team, especially for most uh, for putting up such a detailed presentation. And I think from as far as disclosure is not concerned, uh, but Rampi has set a new benchmark because you know, not many companies are very forthcoming in very such detailed disclosures and things for transparent, especially on the cost side. There's a full slide which mentions a lot of detail cost front, how the cost is changing on cost of quarter basis. So clearly, uh, you know, for disclosure standard, uh, for example, is like a new benchmark for the industry and compliments to you and to promoter and your team for doing that. Uh, my first question is basically, uh, you know, on the export front, 
uh, we are seeing that the prices have you know gone below 18 cents recently and uh, we still have another 2 1 1/2 to 2 million tons of export spending and with the uh, you know expectation of finally doing at least 3 to 4 million tons more and that uh, is still uh, we don't know how much it will do but uh, india has also the small uh, you know uh, uh change the uh, expectation on things at uh, 30.5 to 31.5 so clearly the deficit may not be as big as what was initially being forecasted and therefore the global price has started to soften so how do you see this you know uh, because we still have two to an hour in terms of export still pending uh do you feel uh, confident that you know this will uh, be able to happen because if it doesn't then you know this 6.7 million ton of closing inventory that you're talking you're opening the month we might end up with somewhere around eight and a half nine million ton So um, I'll answer one part. One Pramod, so what is your view on four and a half going to six? Uh, Pratik, we don't have the listing of the total contracts what has been executed so far, but uh, whatever we understand from the market first that four four point five million ton is the conservative number, and going forward on the basis of this uh, prevailing raw sugar prices, maybe raw sugar will not be a major component in terms of further export but the white sugar refined and the local low quality white can be a contributor so what we have seen last year also there is a perennial demand from various neighboring countries in terms of spot demand we say so we don't see any challenge as far as the 6 million ton number is concerned raw sugar may not go but low quality white and refined will definitely make it this is our sense So I'll just add to that. Basically, if you see, a, uh, if we rewind back a year to February last year, Pramod, I think we would have been at three million max to, on today's date. I don't remember. But achieving 4.5 now, six seems to be an absolutely reasonable estimate. So there are a lot of small contracts which go to, you know, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, etc. Having said that. Uh, even the global markets from here looks like uh, trended up only. This is a correction, definitely. But one feels that that is also trended up. So in our view, six million is absolutely a real possibility. This is after checking with the international trade houses also, and hence the depletion to inventory from eight point two to six point seven seems an absolute reality. And just to remind everybody. Two years back, Pramod, we were at 14.5 million, 14.7 million inventory. You are down to 6.7 with an increased consumption base, with a 27 plus consumption base against a 25 consumption base. Your inventory has moved from, you know, uh, 147 lakh tons to 67 lakh tons. So that is where our bullishness on the or firmness in the price comes from. Got it. Uh, so secondly, uh, in the opening round, you also mentioned about this uh, ENA contract, which we have to supply to the government. So I see that the ENA realization has also corrected. So uh, are these prices, you know, uh, determined by the government on an annual basis, the way it all moves, or uh, it is uh, on spot basis? So ethanol, as I told you, be very clear what Pramod said. That's a cost-to-cost endeavor. That is for you know, it's a kind of a levy which the UP government takes. Right. E N A, sorry. E N E N A. Look, my question was that E N A realizations have corrected by almost twenty percent. Why? Why? So this this is a price which is fixed once a year by the government, or this is on a spot basis which changes every quarter or every month. There is no price which is fixed formally for the ENA. It is okay. around the 21, 20, 20 or 20 rupee mark. It remains there only. There is no 20, 30 percent correction like that and all. Because in the presentation it was 25 or 24.69 in QC or that's why 21. Right now it is 19.81. So there is almost a five rupee correction. The GST, GST is gone up. So, the current prices are around 20 rupees only. Exactly, I'm not going to go there. Exactly. Okay. So, if there's two, three rupee correction on two crores, it's a matter of four crores we are discussing in the our balance sheet. Yeah, yeah. 
fair point sir fair point uh i think that's it for my side uh, thank you and wish you all the best thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of rajesh majumdar from bnk securities please go ahead yeah hi good morning sir and thank you for taking my call so sir i had uh, actually one question primarily uh, we have been seeing that the sugar recovery for the company has fallen in this quarter uh, as well over last year's uh, q3 and last year's q3 you had cited the red dot disease as a reason for the fall behind the sugar recovery this year barring the late swing there have been no such uh, disease related factors so why has the e uh, recovery fallen a and b if you look at it over uh, fy 2021 20, it is coming down from 11.93 to 11.77 and let's see assume that a similar kind of fall will happen this year as well we land up at 11.7 11.65 for fy 22 So, are we to assume that the recovery is falling in Central and Eastern UP on a secular basis? Well, that's a very good question. So, two uh, parts to your uh, question, two answers. Pramod, uh, he is talking of recoveries extrapolated on C. Yeah, pre-diversion. Pre pre-diversion. So, yes. Uh, then it it looks like maybe we go to eleven point seven this year. The weather conditions have been very bad. Last one month, there is no sunlight. Thirty days. as soon as sunlight comes which we are hoping as the weather condition on the net they show an improvement and continued sunlight from the 6th of february so that is the main factor this year uh, disease etc is lower so we are not so worried on the disease this year but the weather condition have been very very bad so if you see maybe uh, at the end of the year and this is a maybe from my side that balrampur's fall might be lower than everybody else's fall on a comparative basis right so yes, uh, you're, yeah. the end of this so and my second part was that is it a secular fall happening in the region mm -hmm. going forward so what i'll do uh, since there will be many questions on cane so uh, avantika may request you to just brief on the effort of the company uh, which is on a structural basis on how we look to enhance quantity and quality ensure sustained availability with better recovery thank you so much uh, so also to answer uh, just to add to the to the part that uh, uh, my father was addressing about the recovery possibly having the lowest drop Uh, in in comparison to the rest is uh, we had already last year unleashed a very very robust uh, cane development program wherein we had achieved 85% of our planting uh, of cane in march so that cane is yet to be properly and fully crushed at this moment and we should be better off than anybody else i would think in terms in, in terms of uh, our neighbors of course in terms of uh, recovery once that cane comes into crush fully again we are going to be doing this and pre poning planting so this gives the gives the crop an extra one month to grow and it saves us from these uh, true and weather conditions that we've been dealing with this year um, so that that's the first uh, program we plan to increase planting by 10% this year so we want to increase the uh, area uh, sorry we increase planting 15 to 20% this year so area under cane we want to increase by 10% next year um that would also uh, consequently lead to higher crush and uh, we have already unleashed a very very uh, robust again uh, varietal uh, you know varietal uh, balance wherein we are no longer going to be depending on just one high sugar variety but we are uh, going to be spreading ourselves over four or five which are all up to the mark of 238 um we should achieve this uh, very very soon in fact uh, as also mentioned last year and repeating the mention 118 variety is something which we have aggressively gone towards and we are increasing that as we speak that is supposed to have or supposed to you know i'm sure it has higher recoveries than 238 uh, so that is very good news uh, we've been able to uh, spread it across our areas and you should see you should see a result of that as well other than this we have uh, put in a, a state of the art tissue culture lab which is going to be servicing all the 10 units 
uh, tissue culture is a, you know it's a it's a way to um, multiply newer varieties faster and also to keep them disease free so we are not only multiplying newer varieties but we are also keeping uh, 238 we are keeping a reinvigoration program for 238 as well uh, other than this we are also so that we never fall into trap of disease and we are able to protect our crop from um, you know any any uh, problems that might occur we are doing a seed nursery program as well where every 2 to 3 years the crop becomes fresh uh, in the entire catchment area of 3 to 3.3 lakh uh, hectares uh, rather than this uh, another thing we are uh, focusing very very greatly we are testing upon right now is uh, the ratoon management ratoon management has historically been very uh, uh, very backward in eastern up area central up is still all right but eastern up area it has been backward and it, uh, that's why when you see the season start we have slightly lower recovery slightly lower yields we want to change that and we are putting a very very big stress this year on it so again next year maybe even start of season should be better uh, other than this we have also achieved the highest ever amount of autumn planting uh, last year uh, we have uh, we have achieved around 6% of our total area under cane at autumn planting so at this time where we are right now where you are changing over from ratoon to plant Uh, the autumn plant cane gives us a very uh, you know it gives us short in the arm so the recovery doesn't dip as much as it could have actually right now considering the weather conditions without sunlight to be even getting what we are getting now is a big deal uh, and also this this crop tends to be uh, disease free and uh, lastly we are also uh, we see state of the art soil testing labs across our unit wherein uh, the the soil uh, will be tested from all the catchment area and fertilizer nutrient micronutrients will be prescribed in a tailored manner and according to the need and uh, it should have better results with lower cost to the farmer that's it from my side so what we are doing as you would have heard is we are unleashing a full fledged cane research protection growth program if i may say so so this is a you know for example in expansion if you have to put up machineries and expansion is up you know the investment is about 1000 crores you need to spend in cane to create sustainability which is in a structured structured fashion so that is also a very big uh, program we are taking up in the company so hopefully uh, you know or probably till now because of we stupid we will be falling short but hopefully in the next one or two years you should see the differentiator okay so are we to assume that yields will go back to uh, like 11.9 12 or something which we have seen in fy uh, 20 last in terms of the uh, pre recovery yield uh, so that's what i said just uh, hopefully uh, just wait for a year more okay so we we'll look to, my... you know let uh, let the performance talk right sir Thank you. My second question was an allied question that we are talking about crushing five to seven percent more cane during the current season. Now yes. my three Q uh, is already flat, which is uh, uh, some part of the season over. So we we'll have to crush incrementally another nine to ten percent more uh, in four Q. And as you already said, that the first month has been impeded a little bit because of the uh, lack of sunshine. So are we still uh, confident that we'll be able to recover in fourth fourth quarter in terms of the crushing? Yes. Fourth quarter and in April. Some portion okay. of crushing will spill over from March. Yeah, and that is good. Good until April. What you guys? Yeah, we are very clear on that one till now. So, Rajesh, just to clarify, when we say five to seven percent more, it will not be on a financial year basis, but on a uh, sugar year basis. Yes, my sugar on a sugar season. Sugar, sugar season. Yes. Basis. That basically means April, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just you know, wait it out a bit more. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. So, when the need for cane comes in with big expansion and big distillation capacity, we hope to come in with both feet in and with you know open arms giving cane to the mills. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikram Suryavanshi from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, one is that about this uh, reporting structure in quarterly, we have not seen the segment uh, reporting of uh, power. So, uh, going ahead, are we reporting, combining with the sugar, uh, how is the uh, view on that? So, as, <coughs> as permitted by India and as per the way the accounts are internally reviewed by the management. So that becomes an operating or reportable segment. So taking that into consideration, and you are aware of the fact that Cogen is no longer operating off season. We operate only during the season to support our manufacturing processes and the activities. So the Cogen activities has been combined with the sugar and the distillation activities has been combined with the distillery segment. We have just given the operational co-generation data and financial data has been merged with the respective segments. Got it. Yeah. And in case of distillery, uh, how much would be our uh, capacity uh, which will be dual feed uh, out of the total capacity going ahead or uh, are we still considering on that? We have already commissioned Bulogia <coughs> distillery. With that, our current capacity is 19 crores liter, and by FY24, it will go to 35 crores liter. Again, I would re reiterate that within this 35 crores, two to two and a half crores liter will be dedicated towards production of ENA, which will hardly yield any profit, and this ENA will be for discharging our UP state excise reservation obligation. Molasses reservation obligation. Uh, my question was on uh, raw material side. Uh, will uh, some of the capacity will be on grain based out of this, and how much of that capacity would be? Okay. So, okay. so with out of 33 crores liter of ENA capacity, 5 crores will come from grain side, and 5 crores will come from juice, and the rest will come from BAB. Right, okay. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think uh, what we are uh, hearing recently is that there has been significant increase in the transfer price for the behaving molasses. So what was it uh, for us in this quarter? So we increased the transfer price of behaving molasses from 7,000 rupees a ton to 10,300 rupees, which has become effective from 1st of October. Okay. And uh, was our export under any uh, EQ or it is like uh, uh, without any uh, government support and uh, under any obligation? Yeah, we have exported uh, 15,000 tons during the quarter and this has gone without any support from the government. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hello, from Aditya Birla Capital, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, uh, I must also reiterate the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the disclosure and the detailed presentation is, you know, top class and maybe amongst the top quarter across sectors, not only sugar. Uh, second, you know, I just wanted to just, you know, hear your thoughts that uh, you guys, you know, from a two-year perspective, uh, I know we have already announced your grain based you know molasses so, so do we intend to sort of you know reconsider our plan of further expansion because nearly fifty percent of the India's demand will be met from grain based you know uh, ethanol so just want to hear your thoughts on that so basically as you know uh, we are a little bit of conservative people so we'll first do this entire program in the year and uh, we take up based on economics how rice comes in what's the profit there we go in for it next year we, we we are actively internally seeing that but post uh commissioning of every expansion in the current year sure uh and you know last you know question is uh with respect with regards to the uh, you know, export, uh, you know, when we, you know, do you think, you know, this could be last year of probably in the export from the country, you know, will be very tight uh, in context of demand supply, you know, after this sugar season ends? So it all depends. So therein you yourself are building in the best case for global prices to remain strong down the years. So promote if we see India over the last three years. Six, 17 million tons 
has been provided by India to the world market. Okay. I, I, I assume you know what you said is true, and there are a lot of chances that being correct. Maybe if that happens, the world market itself can get to a level where exports, you know, little bit of one or two million export, if so needed, can be a very profitable proposition if at all. So have I made myself clear? India has exported 17 million. No, no, I, I hear you, sir. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Fair point. And I agree. India vanishes from the market. 67.5 is the opening stock. Assume you produce, you know, diversion is... I'm just drawing a scenario next year. Promote diversion four and a half next year. If there is a little bit of tweaking of monsoon in Maharashtra or something, and assume production comes down to 28, consumption production matches and you don't need to export, or you just remain at 29, and you need to export a million or two, it should go like in a GP. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Algun Data from Jerry Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. So what would be the cost of sugar uh, before considering interest cost for the current sugar season 21-22? No, we, we don't give forward-looking statement. Whatever cost we have achieved for the nine-month period ended, that has been disclosed in the no. presentation. But sir, this so would we, be known, right, given that we know the sugar cane cost and rest costs are mostly same? Ma'am, recovery is not known. No? Okay. Right. And uh, what would be our uh, expected distillery volumes for FY23? FY23, maybe nine, maybe 23 to 24 crores. Because we'll get uh, a four, four months, months working four in months the financial. Okay. But within that 23, 24 range, two, two and a half crores could be in it. Okay, and uh, just to ask the other way, I mean, I'm not asking the precise cost of production. Account of the cane cost increase would have gone up by two and a half rupee a uh, kg, right, this season? Cane cost I mean, has gone up by 25 rupees per quintal. Yeah. Yeah, so the cost of sugar per kg would have gone up roughly by two and a half rupee a kg, right? That will depend I mean, upon the quantity. Uh, uh, you kindly wait for March, you'll get your answer. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's also See, my What answer. we are saying is, if you're talking of margin, basically, yeah. if I am to see the price of sugar last year in the month yeah. of January, yeah. right? It was 31 half. Hmm. Come on, do I recall correctly? Dekh le. Ha, but just check if somebody can tell you. So I remember they were between 31 and a half and 32. Yeah. Today you're at 34, half 35. Mm. So you're already seeing the result of the inventory depletion, which uh, we have briefed you on the call. That's true. So uh, we are seeing form sugar prices and some volume improvement. Okay. So maybe, uh, you know, the cost will get known when it does get known, but we remain buoyant as we proceed into crushing. Uh, uh, this season's realization in April, May onwards, continue okay. from now, and as we proceed into the future. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's helpful. That's all from my yeah. side. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anchal Nohandi from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the opportunity and must compliment here uh, with respect to the presentation. Very exhaustive and very interesting one. My first question is, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, biosphere, I um, wanted to check your view in terms of uh, have we already tested it, uh, you know, uh, and, and if it is doable, how does that change uh, in terms of our uh, dependence on the grain for our Megapur uh, plant? And also with respect to the, uh, you know, uh, capacity additions in future. No, I didn't get your question at all. No, what with is respect to the storage of bio syrup, which, uh, yes, which Prague industry is talking that. about. No. So why should we do that? Our capacity is built on 
a certain amount of cane crushing daily. So the distillery size at a level where whatever I crush during the season, I can consume that in the distillery. The uh, reason we have done that is also to test and play out this grain-based uh, business. Off-season, we do grain-based. So had we gone in for the bio syrup technology, we could have made our distillery at 200 kL instead of 330 kL. We could have stored the syrup. So we're not looking to do that. We're looking to use the capacity in the off-season for grain. Fair point. That is for the current uh, expansion plans what you have. Right, but right. if this was to be a viable alternative, uh, would that mean that we will go for further distillery capacity addition? Would that be a fair assumption? So uh, I would say that we would look at grain, let the things play out. And we have enhanced our distillery to a level where as per the current configuration of the factories, it is not fully utilized. So mostly I would see any more business coming could be through grain because we won't want to sacrifice more sugar also. So everything is doable. It depends on the economics. So let us see the economics the way they play out. Right. If I understood correctly, you are saying uh, uh, the current distillery capacities are keeping in mind the uh, cane crushing capacities and they are kind of fully utilized. If further expansion, it will be more from grain or uh, the way Maizapur has played out. Is that, uh, have I got it right, sir? Okay. Just uh, forget all what you said and listen to me. Okay. There are three parts to this. One, how much of sugar do you want to make? In bracket, how much do you want to sacrifice? So only now if you want to sacrifice more sugar, would have another distillery on the juice level, right? That right. would cause you to sacrifice the sugar, no? Correct. So we are already reaching a very big level of sacrifice next year because Balrampur also will be partly run on juice, right, Pramod? Mejapur fully run on uh, juice. A lot of the heavy capacity is available everywhere. So therefore, there is a certain level of sacrifice you would have reached. Our view, therefore, on sugar prices from the next year onwards is also not bearish at all. So you want to, as a company, produce that much of sugar. Right? So therefore, more distillation capacity can be looked at if grain business is viable. Understand. We just said being conservative, we want to let one year run and then see it. Understood. That's very, very clear, sir. Um, if you could help with a uh, couple of data points in terms of what is the landed cane cost for the uh, quarter gone by? Yes, and also, yeah, 368. Okay. And uh, in terms of distillery volumes, you said uh, 23 crore liter, 23 to 24 for next year. Uh, in the last call, you had talked about 16 and a half uh, or 16 crore liters there about for the current year. Uh, would we uh, be able to achieve that, or you think uh, there could be some delay or uh, you know push uh, in the in the following year? FY21, we achieved 16 and a half crores, including ENA. And we are hopeful of achieving 16.5 to 17 crores in FI22. We have already achieved 12.5 crores in nine months. Are you ago. talking dispatch or production? Dispatch. Okay. Yeah. Right. Dispatch. Yeah. Understood. And this uh, 16.5, 17 will include 2.5 crores uh, later of FI22, 2 crores. FI22, 2 crores. Sir, can you help us understand what is this exact obligation? Is it 18% of the uh, normative calculation? Yes, yes. You got it right. 18% in normative. Right. But in that case, like, uh, you know, uh, this number looks uh, fairly high uh, um, in, in the following year. So, um, uh, this 2, 2.5 crore liter is basis is 18% or there is a cap yes, uh, yes. that is this much? No, no, it's 18%. Our calculation is perfect. 
It's understood. South of two crores, two three lakhs lower only, not higher. Understood. And uh, uh, you know, in terms of the update for this co-generation case, you know, where are we? And since we have kind of now uh, reworked on the segment disclosures, does this also mean that uh, the uh, possibility of we having uh, the kind of profitability contribution from co-gen? Is, uh, is 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 uh, uh, gone. So uh, the case, despite our best efforts, uh, we can't get it on hearing COVID, some excuse or the other. We are trying our very best there. And what was the second question? Uh, Ashal, as far as the profitability of the cogeneration segment is concerned, it will continue to be there. I'm not commenting on any number. It will get clubbed with the sugar division and the distillery division. And we continue right. to sell bagas to get the revenue, which is better than converting into power owing to the revision, downward revision of the tariff. Understood. So, it's Understood. Not so in yeah. Sorry, sir, please complete. Okay. No, that's all. That's all. Okay, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, understand this bagat selling, you know, because what is true for us will be true for the entire state. In that case, what is the kind of demand supply we're looking at for the bagas? Uh, you know, where the user industries are, what um, their capacity, their requirement for bagas is, how much is met by sugar industry, etc., etc. Uh, I mean, no, uh, we don't do so much of research in terms of this. We know. Our buyers are, it's basically paper and pulp units. And they are very, some of them are very close to us in terms of location. And we try and get the best price out of them. This year we got a higher price than last year. Right. No, where I'm coming from, sir, is, uh, you, know, um, uh, uh, you know, currently what we are realizing probably would be between 1700, 1800 per ton for bagas. Could there be a downside risk to that number? No, uh, no, no, no. Next year we are seeing an up. See, last year I don't remember exact figures. Uh, we are going to get a higher realization by at least two to three hundred rupees a ton this year. And in the next year, our uh, cogen business, our juice business, and the grain business would require bagas from our factories only. Therefore, having lesser quantity to sell, we should get a much better pricing. Understood. And just last question, uh, you know, in terms of, you talked about 5 to 7 percent higher crushing for the season, but if you could help us in terms of assuming all normal, you know, for the current coming year, given our plans with respect to the varietal change, uh, the, uh, you know, the plantation uh, overdrive, in terms of the uh, um, uh, cane crushing volume for FI 2022 and 23, if you could help us with that, sir? No, we just told you for the current season, which is on uh, which is which we from the fiscal year perspective, that yeah, yeah, and next even for the fiscal year. So, I fiscal year promote you. Fiscal, I don't have the figure right. He'll like he'll give it to you. We talk crushing season next year, definitely. Uh, based on what Avantika told you in our very, very concentrated effort, we are hoping for a much, much better. Yeah, so we can, you know, better idea is to get in August, where, you know, the entire planting data and monsoon has, you know, largely played out. Sure. But yes, some this evidence very... will be available in May. In May. May, okay. okay. Yeah. Because this is very helpful, sir, I'll come back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Otswal from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I have only one question because most of the questions already answered. Uh, uh, the yield of ethanol production from B heavy root uh, for every hundred quintal of sugar cane. So, uh, because uh, since we, we are now talking about aggressive diversion of sugar cane towards uh, ethanol production, so that will result into impact of the overall company profitability. So, what is the yield moment? Uh, 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 in that uh, space, sir. Give some indication over there. 
will be in the region of around 31.5 to 33% recovery. Recovery of ethanol from DAV molasses will depend upon the level of sugar sacrifice. Uh, it's closer to 33. Closer for us, it should be around 30, 33 30 for our company. Yeah. Closer to 33, just slightly bit. And, and uh, in terms of, you always say, sir, uh, we, we should look at the, uh, our performance on a yearly basis. So, in terms of cost of, cost of production uh, of ethanol, so apart from the sugarcane, uh, what are the other variables which uh, move uh, in, a, in, a, in a high volatility or there is no uh, such variable? Can we tell you that? So, uh, other, other than raw material cost, you can make some inference with the last year's number. Okay. And for the DAV transfer pricing, we have all, already updated you that we have increased it from 7,000 rupees a ton to 10,300 rupees. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kidnesh Kamani from GMO. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Just a uh, follow-up uh, further on the, what Achal has asked on the biosyrup. So what Prajes commented that a biosyrup can be stored throughout the year uh, with one year plus shelf life and can be easily transported. So assuming small distillery which doesn't have the independent uh, distillery can convert part of their sugar cane into biosyrup at 30 to 40 percent. Will it increase the availability of biosyrup and hence if technology is viable? Are we able to use that uh, I can say in your distillery and run for motor uh, higher number of days on the sugar uh, or or bio setup, or you can increase the distillery capacity. We have answered that. We answered. No, I'm that. not talking about you are increasing the consumption. I'm saying if bio setup like right now you are consuming the molasses, so I if bio setup is available, can you use that to increase your capacity without increasing your sugar cane capacity or sacrificing sugar? Jignesh, we have already spoken about our roadmap. Mm -hmm. As of now, we are not looking at this segment. Sure. Uh, second question in the Brazil. Uh, last year, there was a, a, a heavy drought, and hence why production in Brazil got impacted a lot. Uh, recently, there has been enough uh, can say rain in the Brazil. So do you expect that plantation in the Brazil and the sugar production will increase a lot uh, in Brazil, at least from next year onward, which will impact the global sugar supply? We are not very expert as far as the global scenario is concerned, but whatever we understand looks like Brazil can go to a level of around 34 million tons of production next year. Which is not much if India is out of the market. Sure. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Kaswami from BNP Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. <clears throat> so my first question on the mega pool unit, uh, we have to understand it is uh, based on cream juice and uh, grain. The, only that mega pool unit, what will be the uh, max revenue at a full capacity operation and what could be the EBITDA in that? Don't do it. You can't do it. Uh, so we, have, capacity you can yeah, we have spoken earlier also that uh, it will have a potential to generate around 650 crores of annual revenue loss. Yeah, and of that, we can we assume an EBITDA margin of like 45 to 50 percent? No, See, we, we can not. EBITDA that. margin will vary depending upon the many factors, including the transfer pricing and the cost of rice as well as the oh. in juice. But again, I would like to say that yeah. I will visit this stock exchange site wherein we have said that it will have a payback period of 3.75 years. Right. Very good. Okay, okay. I uh, know uh, I'm asking from the point of view that uh, right now what the margin is, uh, ex uh, excluding the transfer pricing effect, uh, will we uh, dilute the margin going forward with screen use, mix, and uh, green? Or uh, will that be a uh, remaining thing? The question was from that angle. We, we, uh, we don't look to put up new money in, uh, uh, you know, businesses which in our sector dilute margin. 
So trust us on that one. That is our calculation. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And my sir, last question on the uh, associate that we uh, have decided to sell for a stay. Uh, how much cash flow can that uh, generate, and what could be if there is any at all any profit from that? Anupam, uh, board of directors has just approved the disposal of the our investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in due course of time. As the transaction. Uh, yes. We will let you. Okay. Know. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gangadhar Kini from Ilara Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, my question is, uh, at what price level of sugar would you consider not diverting to ethanol? Because at some point, if sugar becomes extremely profitable, then there's no point in converting into ethanol, right? So, uh, yeah. the truth is, if you don't divert into ethanol, you will produce more sugar, which will dampen the price. So, there is a blend and a mix, which everyone decides and we would try to create every at the beginning of the season a best case blend for the company okay now my see, my direct question was let's say sugar prices go to 40 rupees per kg would that would that uh, motivate you to uh, not sacrifice sugar for the tunnel? okay let me attempt to answer that directly if everybody in the country who's having ethanol capacity sees this price of 40 rupees and stops diverting to ethanol, you will make 4.5 million tons of more sugar, which will ensure you don't get 40 rupees. So, as I said, this price will be available if there is no surplus. No surplus is going to be owing to diversion into ethanol. That ethanol price is being... Uh, I would say, to the best of my understanding, uh, the government of India has taken a very pragmatic view on the ethanol pricing. So, having, uh, you know, sort of, you can't look at just one portion. That's what I was trying to explain to you. So, if you go to 40, everybody puts up, everybody stops making ethanol, she will come back to 35. Got it, got it. Am I clear? Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take the last question from the line of Suhas Nayak from Kurida Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Good afternoon uh, and congratulations for a very nice presentation. Uh, I have one question. What is it? You said you'll wait for, you'll be cautious and wait for a year before taking further call on green days. So what are the un unknown factors right now? which uh, you are not aware of right now or which can be potential risk, uh, which is why you are uh, planning to wait for some time before taking a fresh call on further investment. It's a good question. The whole thing is there is a limited amount of capital and, you know, uh, we want to put up at a certain point of time. Having undertaken such a, a large expansion of sugar and distillery together, so we just want to give it some time, one, and two, we just want to run the grain business for some time. So like we've run sugar over years, grain will be doing for the first time. So it's just nothing. We just want to wait a little before spending more. There is no large variable one is grappling with or uncertainty. So it's management bandwidth. We want to, you know, we want to take up as much as we can do very well. And just to oh. add, in January 21, we were at 360 KLP. Right. So yeah. we are doing 360 to 1050. Yeah. And we uh, one more question, last question, is the kind of cash generations we are, we are looking at going forward, uh, are you planning any related diversifications, maybe chemicals or something right now? We are all, uh, as a company, one keeps evaluating various opportunities. So as and when something comes up, everything is at the drawing board stage yet. As and when ideas rectify, the board will deal with it and everybody will come to know. But yes, one keeps dealing with ideas. 
many thanks thank you thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments thank you and over to you all thank you everyone thank you for being with us on this call any more clarifications me and promote that there thank you so much thank you very much thank on you. behalf of balrampur chini mills that concludes this conference thank you all for joining give me now disconnect your line